Good morning, Americans. This is your favorite alien and Bubba here on Thursday, January 23rd. Well, it's a warmer day in Georgia. It's about 40 degrees out there today. Beats the 23 and 24, huh? <coughs> anyway, I uh, wanted to do a video today on impeachment, the aftermath. That's to be the last video on this one. Then I'll let you guys enjoy your impeachment. So, I won't tell you the vote. Uh, because it'll be close. And what I mean by close, it's not even close to impeachment, that is. Uh, but you're going to have a few Democrats that are going to cross over and a few Republicans that cross over. So that makes it a wash on both sides, which makes President Clinton found not guilty, or so the things say. So here's the aftermath. The Democrats were claim, were planning, they knew they couldn't win this impeachment, but they were planning on labeling or putting an I on the president. You know, like Laverne and Shirley, where Laverne always wears an L, and every clothing she she has, like the scarlet letter. Well, President Trump's going to take that I. Not for impeachment, for I win. And that's going to embolden his supporters. Unfortunately for the Democrats, uh, they're going to have to find a scapegoat of all this mess. And Adam Schiff will be the first one. And Pelosi, of course. So here we come. We're in the middle of an election year. Uh, in the old timeline, uh, Tulsi Gabbard didn't get much over 2% in Iowa, 4% in uh, New Hampshire, and the DNC forced her out by South Carolina. That was the old timeline. Here, I'm trying to help Tulsi Gabbard and your supporters. So come on, supporters of Tulsi. Let's show those DNC guys that you're going to get more than 2% in Iowa and more than 4% in uh, New Hampshire. And you're going to be up to at least 12, 15% in South Carolina. Well, in the old timeline, by the time of the uh, June primaries, Biden had... Uh, gotten a solid lead, but he didn't have a majority, okay? Warren was still there, and Sanders, of course, are bringing up to rear and third. All the other candidates have, you know, dropped out, have been forced out by the DNC. That caused a disagreement among supporters of the candidates that got forced out, like uh, Bloomberg, uh, and uh, Buttigieg, Yang, Kobuchar, all those candidates, they were not really happy when the convention came around. But there was a backroom deal struck on that, and Biden got the nomination. Trump, on the other hand, sailed through the Republican nomination. No problem there, even though he got impeached. Yeah. And... In the middle of all this, you had a disagreement between Virginia and West Virginia. Virginia lost more territory because the counties on the western that border West Virginia wanted to join West Virginia, and they did. That caused a heavy backlash on the Virginia, and the Republicans got the upper hand again. Trump wins Virginia. And he wins Pennsylvania, he wins Michigan, he wins Iowa, and he wins Florida. Trounces Biden big time. So by the end of the election day, CNN doesn't know what to do. Joey Bearhart, on the other hand, is so distraught that she doesn't show up for her view after the election. <laughs> she doesn't even say like she did in the election before. You better get your abortions now. Yeah, no, she doesn't do this now. So this is the old timeline here, which I'm trying to change. Trump wins, 
You get a coup d'etat in late 2021 because of Trump's decisions that he makes in January, February, March of 2021. Oh, it, it becomes a mess. Trust me. Anyway, <laughs> this is your favorite Indian and Bubba. Come on, Tulsi supporters. Let's change the DNC mind and see if we can make this election a little bit more interesting, huh? So, let's support Tulsi Gabbard. This is your favorite alien and Bubba. Good day.